Last week, my friend and podcast co-host Eckhart Slatter did a video on why humans are the dominant species in Star Wars, covering a broad range of factors that played into it, which I'll link to in the description. I wanted to build a bit on what he was talking about in that video by diving a bit deeper into a period under the Republic, where support for what was effectively human supremacist movements and atrocities committed by them would surpass even the height of the Empire. The Pious Dea. This is a period which would set in motion many of the political factors which allowed the fomentation of discontent that led to the Clone Wars. The Pious Dea era was ushered in in the year 11,987 BBY, or before the Battle of Yavin, with the impeachment and subsequent assassination of Supreme Chancellor Perslia, a Bothan who held the office in a period where many in the Republic feared the prospect of the new Hutt Empire following the Hutt Cataclysms, which we discussed in the very first video I made on the channel. Alongside this fear was a feeling that the Senate needed to be cleared of corruption and vice. It was in this context that a man named Contuspex, later Contuspex I, a member of the Pious Day of Faith as well as the Coruscant's Merchants Guild, rose to prominence. This era would last for a thousand years, where the Senate became dominated by supporters of the Pious Day of Faith and devotees of Contuspex, who was succeeded as Supreme Chancellor after a 40-year reign by his son Contuspex II, the reign of Contuspex the 19th, whose fall involved the Jedi coup and the suspension of the Senate in 10966. The Pious Dea's cult's true intentions and attitudes towards aliens were not always totally explicit. Initially, they advertised themselves as solely wanting communities to police themselves. However, this evolved under Contuspex the first and his successor's leadership to involve preaching the need for communities to purge, according to the Essential Guide to Warfare, their irredeemable elements. Irredeemable, it turned out, often meant alien, and a series of crusades were executed with genocidal intent. This began with a preemptive war with the Hutt Empire, called the First Crusade, in 11965. And the Hutts would again be the targets of the Third Crusade in 11939, and the Fourth Crusade in 11920. Although the Hutts were the primary group against which the Pious Dea stoked humanocentric xenophobic fears, other species would quickly become targets of the Pious Dea Crusades and political suspicions. Many aliens were exterminated or driven back from richer core worlds into poorer rim worlds, which the Pious Dea saw as the home to unruly chaos that had to be held back, all fueled by the Pious Dea rallying cry, The Goddess Wills It. Life within the Pious Dea quickly became filled with witch hunts to expose so-called alien agents. Among their other crusades against alien species were the Seventh, or Great Northern Crusades, which targeted Iridonians and Zabrak, and the Twelfth which involved the Republic glassing the Xeracene homeworld, forcing them into a nomadic lifestyle. This crusade also targeted the Tyrosins. The Jedi, so disgusted by the actions of the Pais Dea and the Republic during this period, renounced all of their duties and ties to the Republic in 11933, which was followed by centuries of schism within the Order. Although the Order as a whole at first took no official position for or against the Republic, some knights did fight against the Pious Dea under the willful ignorance of the Council. Others would split off from the Order and support the Pious Dea, becoming the Order of the Terrible Glare. Unsurprisingly, the actions of the Pious Dea created many enemies among the galaxy's inhabitants, including some human groups. Alsacon, a world along the Perlemian which had been engaged in intermittent wars in a constant power struggle with Coruscant for nearly 10,000 years, finally seceded from the Republic, along with several other worlds along the Perlemian trade spine, and began the Sixth Alsacon Conflict in 11,820's BBY. Many local worlds and alien species across the galaxy gathered around the Alsacan as a focal point, and Alsacan began sponsoring communications between Huts, Duros, Herglix, and other disaffected alien groups. 800 years later, when the Crusades had finally stalled, the Jedi became convinced by Kamasi agents to intervene. The Kamasi, Jedi, and al Sakani began to cooperate to sow discord among the Pious Dea faithful, starting a new faith within their ranks, and by 10967, the newly formed Renunciate faction had begun a civil war with the faithful on their worlds, fighting them for control over their ordnance depots as well as their massive citadel ships. With support for the Renunciates being provided by Jedi, Alsacan, and various alien species who had been long targeted by the Pious Dea, including species like the Huts, Herglix, and Duros. Also key to the victory of the Renunciates was that the Pious Dea control over the Bureau of Ships and Services was incomplete. 
Agents of the B Bureau, working with the Alliance, were able to input Nava computer data to the Citadel ships of the Piastea, forcing them to jump to unknown empty space, unable to return, essentially leaving a massive armada worth of ancient warships floating inaccessible to the galaxy for millennia, and it was never found during the course of the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The Alliance was ultimately successful, and the war ended with the Jedi arresting Contuspex the 19th. The Jedi, with the support of their allies, dismantled the Senate and began essentially rebuilding the Republic government. Although the following period once again saw a certain level of reintegration with non-human species into the Republic leadership, the effects of the Pius Dea period would be far-reaching, with their effects and ideals being mirrored up to and even including the Imperial period. While the institutions of the Pius Dea were gone, the attitudes that supported them were not, and it's not the kind of thing that the targets would quickly forget either. The massive population displacement, not just from the exterminations and forced relocations, but of aliens fleeing the core because they feared for their lives, saw a greater segregation between the rich, human-ruled core and predominantly non-human, often poorer rim worlds. These attitudes would persist and are addressed explicitly in the Darth Plagueis novel, as Eckhart Slatter mentioned in his video. If you look at the Clone Wars as well, the rim worlds, which often supported the CIS, tended to be largely alien or non-human species, whereas the core, which largely stayed loyal, tended to be primarily human. This is of course a generalization, there were other factors of course that went into the Clone Wars like the Sith machinations, however, there were still these attitudes that reached back to and even before the Pious Dea period. That's going to do it for today's video though. Our last video was pretty significantly focused on out-of-universe production factors, which is something we focused on a lot recently, so I figured this one should be a little bit more in-universe to try to keep a balance. As always, if you have any suggestions or feedback for future videos, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.